It's, 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 it's snowing. A little bit. What do you want to do? Well, I'm not. I'm too old for snowballs. We can't really go driving. No. I hate winter. Let's go working in a car. I prefer spring. Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. It is uh, pouring down with snow, so what better a time than to strip a car down and fix things? Well, that's what winter projects are. Yeah. That's it, what the winter projects are all it, about. It doesn't get more winter than this. No. <laughs> so, yes, we, uh, we are now doing our big prep for proper track for the part of Tools and Track. And Noisy Boy, as you probably noticed, and we'll skip to in a few videos here, uh, bounces a lot. And I mean a lot. Uh, that isn't the best thing for handling, so it's probably time to think about suspension. Now, um, I would have done this a lot sooner. Uh, I actually did identify this at Creole when we were getting the bouncy launches. Um, budget, life, circumstance, everything else means it's now a winter project. But we've got there, we've decided to go for gas adjustable coilovers in this instance. Um, and that's the last I'll say about it because I didn't get them for free, so get up you guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Enough of the free plug-in. That'll right. do it. That'll Call do it. Overs. Yeah, coilovers. Yeah. Uh, other brands are available, I'm sure, but not quite for the price. These come in quite reasonable, so we're going to go over that. Now, to speak a little bit about the coilovers, these are gas golds, as they're called. Um, very similar in design to the ones that are currently on it, so nothing as radical as your typical Mark II Golf changing the whole strut affair. These will replace the existing uh, Bilsteins. 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 Oh, well, yeah. the, the original as they came at the factory were Bilsteins. Yeah. I'm guessing yours probably haven't been changed, which you'll I would see. guarantee it, considering the state they're in. More than anything else, I think the big problem I've got with mine is the top and the bottom bushes on these are gone. And I mean gone. There's clonking and all sorts of noises. So straight off the bat, that's an improvement. Uh, the other thing to note about these, they are height adjustable, as you can see, with your uh, locking collars on the bottom. So that'll be something we'll no doubt have to set up in due course. I'm sure you can probably do with a wee height tweak, seeing as how you already run these. Well, and so still have tractor height. <laughs> yeah, mine, mine are down, mine are quite low, which are fine for me in the car. There's a little bit of scuffing if I've got the boot yeah. fully loaded, but for track, you know what, they're perfect. Uh, another thing that these shocks come with is damper adjust. This should be quite considerably helpful <laughs> on. Uh, on various tracks, certainly not kill will be on slack because, uh, well, that's that being said, not kill has just been resurfaced, so I'm, I'm hoping, having really never really experienced it beforehand, that it will be a bit smoother on the suspension. But uh, some of the more fancy tracks down south, we can certainly ramp up the damp on that and hopefully get some better times in. So that's the idea. That's Let's get the old ones off and see how bad they actually are. So we're starting at the front simply because it's easiest to access because we're doing this in my home garage because the unit's far too cold. <laughs> uh, first thing we're going to have to do is try and get the shock out. So this, as I say, has never been done before. So uh, prepare for swearing because <laughs> there's probably going to be a few things that are not going to come off the way they should. I will say that these will at least come off fairly easy because these are my Skunk Works Special Edition. Uh, Rose jointed drop links. Ah, they've been on the car for a couple of years now. No, three years. Three years for these, and look how easy they turn. Yeah. Professional craftsmanship from Skunk Works. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see what nick they are in when, uh, when they actually come off, but. Oh, because I've only removed the lock nut. <laughs> so you had a lock nut on. Over engineer these things, mate. There's a lock nut on here as well. Here we go, one That's with okay. its washer. <sighs> but I should point out at this stage that the new ones come with nylocks and just they weren't available when I first. <laughs> these were the, the, the first generation ones that I ever did. And I was like, oh, I'd be really fancy and not have potential perishing of nylocks. And then uh, what actually happened was I completely forgot there's a lock nut. I've got it. The reason why we're panting so much at the moment is this lower shock mount onto the lower wishbone has enough room just for two 90mm spanners. So no sockets, no impact guns, nothing like that, because there's no hole on the other side for this. 
And just to compound matters, you have enough for an eighth of a turn every time. <laughs> and because this is closer to the road, the thread is dirty. Um, I, I blame Brexit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, this would not be an issue if it wasn't for Brexit. The tongue is a concentration aid, by the way. Stick the tongue out. Yep. And it just fits. Just no more. That uh, famous engineer, Justin, no more. What I'm hoping here is, once we've got the top and the bottom off, that the, the strut will just fall out. Um, so if it does that, it means we don't need to break any more of the suspension, even though I've just taken the anti roll bar. Drop one cough. So let's give this a go and see what happens. We are taking no chances and we're dropping on a breakers bar. Colour big bars. And a substantial ratchet to take this off. So, uh, yeah, that was easy. It means you've got a bit more reach on it. We've got the old gank off, which is uh, we've established an eye back. So I don't know if that was standard fit or not, but uh, whatever it was, it's uh, done. It's, um, Corrosion alone, uh, we're seeing perishing on the bushes. Oh, the bushes are sharp. Yeah, good. So looking at this, I'm guessing that'll be a rear. Yeah, it's a lot taller, that's probably rear. Let's look at it front. Other end. <laughs> that would help. So, yeah, much better. Um, these, I'm not entirely sure, we'll need a tremendous amount of adjustment before we chuck them on. Probably take a bit of the slack off so the spin's not. Quite so twisty, um, pretty low zipper, whatever it is. At this point, I'll say we're not setting these up today. Um, the reason being that I don't, I don't know how. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we have, a we have a handyman that does, so there'll be, a, there'll be another discussion at a later date. We have one C spanner. This is what we call a dick move, my guess. Thank <laughs> you for that. Now, before we chuck these in, I'm going to give them a quick measurement to see what the distance is so we can set front and rear to be the same. Right, a bit of grease and uh, chuck them in. I probably could look more excited about this, but I just, you know, it's, it's went really well so far and it's given me the fear. <laughs> <laughs> As so often is the case with TVR, you can't get in, so you do it blind. <laughs> Going back together a lot easier than it came off. Yeah. What a shot. Salted, governor. Salted! Going down. Yeah, nice and slow. <laughs> it's not the most forgiving of jacks. Yeah, looks exactly the same. <laughs> They'll be a wee bit settling in them. Bingo. <laughs> oh no, that dropped out of touch. Yeah, it's not too drastic. No. Happy so far? Success! Front done. Front done. Look at that. Back to do. The rears were much the same story as the front. The Chimera has double wishbones front and rear, so the removal and refit is an identical process. So much so, Cox and myself decided to speed things up a bit and take a side each. Condition wise, the originals were in a similar state as the ones up front. The new ones, as you can see, look far better, and frankly, made the rest of the underside look a bit shabby. There we have it. Job done. It's a few hours now. <laughs> um, the snow stopped. The snow, the snow has stopped, as yep. he's trying to say. Use my words. Aye. But that's it. Yeah. Uh, suspension fitted. Not the worst job in the world, I've got, to, I've got to admit. That was actually surprisingly easy. I think we had more problem with the first bolt on the very first strut. Yeah, corrosion was the big issue with this one. Um, there's a lot of exposed threads after the nuts on, on a lot of the bolts in this, and obviously 20 years worth of grain, there was a bit of a struggle. But even at that, that was only because we couldn't get the purchase and the turn on it. Aye, right. well, an eighth of a turn every time. Uh, yeah. Takes a bit of time. That's my workout for the day. Aye, that's um, it. But yeah, the ride height, not particularly different. Um, I'm waiting for the snow to clear so we can see if the drive is any different, and I'm really Aye. hoping it will be. Uh, because it's a bit too crashy. As much as that would be fun out there at the moment, all snow. Well, you know. But not in the first time. No. I think, no. I think we'll maybe size it out properly in some dry roads, which is annoying because, as you probably guessed with the video, 
I was absolutely barking and I would quite like to wash it, but everything's frozen. Nah. So, yeah. One last task to do and, uh, and then we're done for the day. Our fault is on the headlamp panel to the right of the stereo. Specifically, it causes the lights to go on and not turn off again. Simple fix, right? To make life a bit easier for myself, I've started to take all of these nasty old cable ties off that hold all this together and we're going to remove some of the extraneous loom now. For the love of God, people, draw a map so that you can put it back together in the right order. This will help in the long run. Once the strip down had got to this stage, it became clear the issue was with the panel that hosted all the switch gear and not the switch itself. No matter, the stainless steel switches would not only be an upgrade, but fix the broken panel plate issue as well. Right, so our strip down has carried on a little bit. We are now sitting with one panel. I've just trial fitted the switch. Which looks pretty good, not gonna lie. I'm buzzing about that. So, that's looking good. I've also gutted down the original faulty plate. This is now sitting with all the original LED caps. However, these have now been stripped down as well. So I've took the old crappy little uh, bulbs. And by the way, if you're wondering why you get flickering lights in a TVR, that is how the bulb is secured. Uh, twisted wire uh, and put into a little socket. So, no shockers there. So what we're going to do here is, I've uh, got a bit creative, had a wee trip down to a generic local electronics store, and we've found these LEDs. Now, remove that background, that's how the LED normally looks. It's just a little LED within a cartridge with a couple of small pins on the end. This, originally, held the light in on the original bulb cartridge. Remove that, sleeve over this, which incredibly is an exact fit. And we're gonna drop that into the new guy. That means all our bulbs will now be LED, which means they'll probably work a bit better as well. Um, I don't seem to have any way for this to actually hold in though now, which is a bit of an issue, because the original clip is in the back of this this into the cartridge. So I'm probably going to just drop a little bit of glue into the back of this. Not a tremendous amount because obviously if the LED fails we need to be able to remove it again but just enough to stop it rattling about because at the end of the day it's, it's not going to have any force acting on it. It's the buttons here that are the issue. So I'm going to crack on, stick all these in, drop a bit of glue and then see if we can reassemble it. As is so often the case, a simple button repair has become a full dash rewire. We're now upgrading all the original filament warning lamps to LED. The three original buttons are also taking a walk as well, replaced with stainless steel push buttons which will not only look better, but also grip the back panel to the fascia, thus solving the original issue that we had. I hate to say it, but we've had a bit of a skip to the end moment here. There was no trial run with this, uh, just seeing if it's going to work. You've not really missed much. So, what we've done is use the original wiring, whatever possible, uh, just to keep the colours right in the room, because I don't have any of these uh, sheath colours kicking about. Um, we've trimmed off the original uh, larger blades, female blade terminals. We've put on these smaller ones to suit the new switch gear and LEDs. Uh, we've put our glue in and it's dried, and all I've done is drop these on and then it's all sitting all terminated up and looking rather lovely. So, somewhat nervously, now time to see if it's going to work or not. No, I'm really confident this is going to work. Let's, uh, let's go do this. You may notice a rather loose looking cable tie hanging around on the side of this and wonder, hmm, that looks a bit sloppy. Well, I tell you right now it's not. Cable tie does is hold the loom and stop any pull on the crimps. That'll stop some loose connections I would hope. So we are now in Noisy Boy. It's time to test fire these. Um, just to show you what I've done, I've um, jerry-rigged it off the dash because should there be issues uh, I don't want to have to unscrew everything and rip it all back out again. So very much in test mode. Um, I've just connected up the battery, ignition's on so let's see. So. First things first, side lights, main beam, fog lights. 
So, e side lights. You'll notice here that's also kicked on the dash lights as well. So that's doing what it should do. Main beam, which is also doing what it should. And last of all, fog lights. Now, this guy is for the full beam, which uh, if we just do that, it also works as well. And it's also a pretty good result looking at uh, the finish on it as well. So I'm happy with that. One slight problem though. Yeah, fasten your light switches look great. The only problem is... Yeah. Well, at least I know the concept works.